Hey guys, welcome back to more tutorials. I'm your host, Magnet, and today we're talking about playing Marine Tank and TVT. Something I need to say about TVT is that there's really only a few unit compositions that are very common in this matchup, and it kind of shifts depending on what your opponent is doing. So, this is also known as if you're both were going bio versus bio. And I'll just explain the progressions really quickly. If you're both going bio, like Marine Marauder Medevac, it's obviously a lot better to cut out the Marauders since Marines do much more efficient damage, and it's also more efficient to add in tanks, so it becomes Marine Tank versus Marine Tank if both players are playing bio. So that's kind of what you're going to want to shoot for. So if somebody's doing something weird like pure bio versus your Marine Tank, there's really not much of a reason you should lose because your units are just going to be so much better than his. So that's why this evolves into Marine Tank and uh, TVT. So we'll just, you know, you can refer to it as bio versus bio, whatever. But we're mostly going to be talking about the ways you win with this and the ways you avert disaster when you're playing this composition. So let's jump into the game and we're going to be watching Select versus QXC. And considering TVT was such slim pickings for uh, Season 1, which is when these replays were from, it's really hard to find replays for this. So we are going to see the same players playing each other in Game 2 and actually from the same series. But these guys do a really good job of showing us everything that we really need to know about Marine Tanks. So uh, it's it's forgivable, obviously. <laughs> so we won't be talking too much about the openers. Um, QXC is going uh, gas first, which is going to either be for a really fast Banshee or really fast Hellions. Um, on select side, he's playing a little bit more defensively, and he's mostly the player we're going to focus on this game. So we're not going to talk too much about openers, because we've talked about that a little bit already. And there's going to be a lot of videos uh, regarding different openers that you can run in this matchup just to stay safe or to put on some pressure. So we won't worry about it too much. This is really run-of-the-mill TVT stuff. One player going for Banshees and one player not going for Banshees. So back in Select Space, he's just getting a mine, getting his starport up here, probably for something like a Raven or a Viking. Yeah, there's the Viking now. So gonna burrow a mine here, hopefully catch a Banshee, and not quite able to get it, but all this is really going to do is just, just going to kill Marines. So this might be the first stage of the game as far as in Marine Tank. Is somebody might run a Banshee opener to specifically kill Marines, and especially if you already have turrets set up here to defend against that. You're not going to lose any SCVs, but if they're constantly trying to kill your Marines, that may be for a later push when they start getting their tanks out and Marines out so that you have less units to defend. So this is why the Viking is so important, and if you can get the Raven out there, that's also a really good option. You'll notice that Select doesn't really do that, and it costs them quite a few Marines here, but that's something you need to avoid as well, or maybe do if you want to run Marine Tank, considering it can get you an early advantage. You can see this Banshee does have just four kills, but those are all Marines, and he'll have four more Marines when the first fight comes, assuming they both play this way. So, um, on both players' side, and I need to mention this, is that you're only seeing one building of each uh, from both of these guys thus far. And once they start adding on their extra buildings, that's going to determine where, what direction they're going to go. And we're going to have separate videos for playing bio against mech, for example, or playing mech versus mech. Um, but this is going to be if both players opt to choose bio, which means they both start to get upgrades for their bio units, which is two engineering bays, for example. There's not really much reason to run off of just one engineering bay in TBT most of the time, so they'll usually go with two. And then once they start to add on their extra barracks and get their stim, that's going to basically commit them into bio, and it'll be the same for uh, the player on the other side in, this, in these particular videos, considering they both opt for that. But again, like I was talking about, it doesn't make much sense to run Marine mar Marauder Medevac against one another, because tanks are so much better, and Marines are so much more efficient against Marauders, considering once you get plus three, they just run through the Marauders really fast. So that's kind of the idea behind this. So the Vikings just starting to explore out here, seeing what it can do. QXC is doing a little bit of a push, but not doing too much. Really, you just want to try and get your tank out as soon as possible, so you can see this out already. And tank positioning is a really big thing in uh, Marine Tank especially, so he's just getting a very forward position, and notice how much area he's kind of canceling out. He's also starting a bunker here on the low ground because he really wants to take his third base, but QXC is going to stop that well, at the cost of a couple Marines. And for the most part, in Marine Tank, it's really all about who gets a better tank positioning. So if you get there first, then there's not a ton that they can do to effectively break that as long as you do have spotting. So know that these Vikings are very important in this, considering the tank can't see as far as it can actually fire. So all this you can't see, but you can see 
uh, other stuff because the Vikings are poking out that far. So the Viking and the air advantage is definitely something that needs to be uh, talked about as well. So a few Vikings just to win those air battles is pretty good. But by the late game, everyone's using scans just to spot for their tanks if they really need to anyway. So it's not... I mean, you don't need to go crazy on the Vikings, but it is good to have in the early game, especially to push away uh, Banshees and stuff like that. So you can see the tank is demanding all this position, and if he comes within range, then he's going to get wasted. He just uh, lost a bunker there. So it's really not that big of a deal, considering there were no units in it. So Select's just continuing to defend. And eventually, uh, drops are going to become a really big part of this matchup. You can see both players are starting to add on their barracks now. So Stim's on the way for QXC. It's a little bit later for Select because he went for the earlier third command center. And honestly, I would favor, if you're just starting out in this matchup, I would favor the more defensive plays in TVT. So you want to worry about things like stopping drops, getting more tanks out, getting your upgrades on the way. So you can see both these players just on one engineering bay, actually. It's a little more common to do two, but I guess a lot of the thought process, if they both know they're, go they're going marine tanks, is that the armor upgrades aren't hugely important against the tanks, but they still can be really useful. Um, so, uh, like I was saying, if you're just starting out in this matchup, I would favor the way Select is playing, which is a very defensive style. He's just demanding position with these tanks and kind of sitting them out in front of his base. And then he has these Vikings roaming around to try and catch drops, just in case a big drop comes, considering that can be one of the bigger uh, mechanics of Marine tanks. So, I'm going to see Select going down to take his third base here. And so, uh, QXC has already started building his third base over here, so it's still a pretty equal game. And we're not going to see... I mean, the, the win conditions on this are basically don't mess up, for one. And the, the ways you don't want to mess up is you don't want to ever run your Marines into tank fire. You always want to keep the Marines out of tank fire unless you know you can break a position. Or maybe if you're dropping on top of the tanks or something. Uh, it's really rare to be able to just run up there and do something. So one of the biggest ways to lose this is to just run all of your stuff into siege tank fire because they'll kill so much by the time you get there, then it won't be worth it. So the idea is that uh, both players will basically be demanding position with their tanks, and then if they ever run Siege or something like that, that's usually your attack window to go if you really want to, but I really wouldn't recommend this from Select's point of view, considering there are just as many Marines down here for QXC. That shouldn't do too much. So QXC is just backing off. He knows he can't break Select right now, and Select is just being annoying trying to stop this command center from starting up, and he's able to successfully do that. Um, so a lot more stuff on the way here. You can see a ton of barracks, and they're really all producing marines. There's one factory producing tanks. You can go up to two if you really want to, but um, you also do need to worry about the gas spending on these medevacs, considering you will want to heal your marines and have the option to drop them and whatnot. So Select is just putting up a sensor tower here so we can see all the approaches from uh, the other Terran player, which is QXC. And defending drops, of course, is a really big deal, so notice that Select is adding on all these extra turrets, which is something I really like if you're opting to play a defensive style in this matchup. And there's also the Vikings that should be floating around here somewhere, there they are, which can shoot down these medevacs as well, so big drop coming in, but this is not really going to do a whole lot because he has units in position, some of the dropships died before they could even unload, and uh, yeah, so this is really good drop defense here from Select, not a whole lot going on here for QXC. And if you can defend drops like this with extra turrets, maybe leaving some units behind, then you should be absolutely fine, and they won't get an advantage in that way, considering that's one of the ways you can get a big advantage in Marine Tank uh, Mirror Battles. So, uh, moving forward here. Now it's up to Select to kind of decide when he wants to move out. Uh, we're going to have another video that's mostly about mid-game timings and uh, kind of aggression at that stage of the game. But if you ever win a fight like that, you should probably be thinking about getting on top of your opponent as soon as possible. So uh, the most important thing is really the tank count. You can see the tank count favors select by a couple. Uh, that's mostly because QXC lost a bunch in his uh, previous attack. QXC is just opting to counterattack right now. And this is one of those situations where if your opponent gets too spread out and these tanks aren't protected very well, then you can start dropping your marines on top of them. Uh, if you really wanted to be cute, you could land the Vikings on them, um, or you could just straight up attack them, and you you would lose some forces, but killing these tanks is a really big thing, and the, the tank count in both of these sides is a big, big part of the matchup, so uh, you can see QXC is running back to his tanks, he really doesn't want to leave those out to dry, but if your army is just way bigger, you can just go sometimes and, and clean this out. You will still not trade very effectively, as you can see the supplies are still pretty much the same, but you will at least clear it out, so... 
You sometimes do need to be willing to waste a few units just to do that. Um, either way, we're going to see Select start to be a little bit more aggressive out on the map here. QXC is still being annoying and trying to keep Select in his base. But uh, considering, considering QXC's lost all those tanks, the tank count is still 8 to 4 right now. And now it really all comes down to trying to end the game with your tank positioning. So we're going to talk about that as, as Select continues to try to finagle a way to get up here. Because once these tanks are set up, you really can't afford to go within those ranges considering the marines can attack really well against it and kind of buffer for quite a while. Another little drop and run by here, but again, if you have your own marines and medevacs and tanks in the right position, then you should be totally fine. Now QXC has mistakenly abandoned a really good position here, and if you're select, your tank positioning really needs to get to a point where you can start to hit their base or hit their production lines, and they really can't afford to come in there because your tanks are sieged. So right now he knows that QXC's tanks aren't sieged, and if he can get somewhere like right here with his tanks, then he can start uh, kind of pushing toward this mining base. And if he can ever get a siege on this mining base, it's going to be really hard for QXC to come down and, and stop that. So most of the ways you're going to end the game with Marine Tank is just by getting a really good positioning with your tanks to a point where you can protect your Marines and there's not really a whole lot they can do to stop you from maybe killing a base or the production lines especially are really important to get a control over. So. Uh, we're seeing Select come up here. He's going to siege his tanks. And again, you want to keep your, your Marines out of tank fire as much as possible. So if you see these tanks sieging, you should really just run your Marines away for a little bit. Maybe you're going to get his Marines to chase you into your own tank fire. And really, whoever gets the better hits on the Marines is going to get a really big advantage here. So we're going to see both these guys kind of pull back a little bit. Select's being a little more sloppy about it, so both of them doing a little bit of pullbacks. Fairly equal trades right there, but... If one, one of the players was to just straight up run out of the siege tank fire and the other one was to stay in the other person's, they would fall way, way behind. You can see the Marines just die instantly. And now that Select has this great positioning, he can start to leapfrog his tanks forward and he can start clicking on QXC's tanks to see where the range extends to. So right now he knows he has to kill this tank in order to get access to this base, but this tank can also hit that as well. So this is going to start putting QXC on a little bit of a clock if he can siege this up in the right position. So he sieges this up, QXC realizes this is a threat and starts to move forward a little bit. You can see that because these tanks were here first, QXC really can't afford to siege up in the right place. Otherwise he's going to start losing tanks, and now he's going to start getting his base hit by these tanks as well. So uh, this tank is in a really great position, and these tanks are really just to defend uh, any sort of big run-ins from behind and whatnot. And if you're able to get this type of position, you can even scan and click on their tanks and see the range. You can see this dotted line indicates the range here. And you can just stand right outside the range and hit this base and force him to not be able to mine. This is one of the really big ways you're going to win a lot in this matchup is get, getting position like this to prevent mining and whatnot. And you really need to find creative ways to do that. So you can see all of his marines are standing right on the edge of that tank. Once this tank is finishing up, he might have a little bit of a harder time. But he's just focusing this down, trying to do the best he can. Of course, the Vikings here in case he does lift off. But just denying all this mining time and killing all this SCV is getting him a pretty big lead right now. It's 170 supply to 150. So he's already taken a 20 supply lead because of stuff like this. So hopefully this is at least kind of explaining a little bit of what's going on. And of course the reinforcements coming in right now. Um, just want to get it set up in a good position here. You don't want to just run them in. And now that QXC's decided that he has to get desperate and break this, Select's tanks are still already sieged. Um, and he does have reinforcements coming in here on the side, so really if you're defending against a, an attack like this, you just keep your tank siege the best you can. I mean, obviously, you don't really have to do anything, they'll just fire at whatever they want. But your marine control, you really want the marines taking the damage so you don't take any tank fire here. And if they get this desperate to this point, you can usually deal a lot of damage, as the tanks will usually wipe out all their marines, and you'll usually have some stray marines left over here and there. And now look at the supplies. It's 143 to 110 for Select in his favor. And he can just continue to rally forward from this point because he's got such a big lead. And he killed off so many tanks right now. Tank count is 8 to 3, or excuse me, that's a 6 to 3. And Select's still in a great position here, so QXC's going to have a really hard time coming back from this. So that's most of the ways you're going to end the game. And he's still rallying forward Marines right now. If there's only one tank, you can do pretty well against this stuff. Just focus the tank down the best you can and then the Marines won't be able to break your tanks in. This is, uh, this is going really well here for Select, and it was really all because he got this position and he could start hitting this base. It made QXC have to do something, otherwise he was just going to continue to slowly lose. So, a uh, really good play there from Select, and GG is called out. So. Let's take a look at another game really quickly. All 
tab to get into my giant replay bank here. Again, like we're talking about, this is going to be QXC versus Select. This is going to be more of a weird game uh, where both players really can't engage each other all that well. And we're going to talk more about the ways you can transition in the later parts of the game if you're able to do stuff like that. Um, so we're going to fast forward through a lot of this. We're not going to focus as much on the intricate details of early game and tank positioning and whatnot, considering we kind of covered that a lot already. So uh, again, it's QXC versus Select, and I think mostly we're going to watch this from the perspective of QXC this time, rather than from Select, so both of them just getting up a pretty normal uh, opener here, just a barracks and a relatively normally timed gas. Um, I don't... actually this was gas first from both of them, so never mind, I'm wrong. So both of them going to get into a really fast factory, orbitals on the way, both of them making marines. And again, this could be for a really fast banshee on both sides, or really fast hellions, or fast drops, or something like that. So uh, it's just going to afford you the fastest factory and starport possible. So both of them are doing that. I, now I remember this game. This is going to be a uh, Hellion drop here from QXC, but it's not going to be anything too wild because Select defends it pretty well, considering he gets a Banshee, uh, and the Hellions can't hit Banshees. So everything just rallying forward right now for QXC. Going to pick up the rest of his stuff and drop it in there. Not too much going on here. I mean, as long as he controls properly, the Banshee should really be able to kill almost everything. And he's not really going to lose too much, preparing his Banshee, of course. Getting a, a Viking out is QFC to start trying to kill that Banshee, but Repair is going off on the Banshee too, so kind of a weird battle here. But again, we're not focusing too much because we want to get onto the point of Marine Tank. We'll talk about all this opener stuff in other videos, so I think at least one of them is already done, but there will be more coming in the near future. Um, so, anyway, both of them going to start getting into the marine tank style, which is, again, it's going to be the bio openers, as both players start to add on things like stim, and it only makes sense to only make marines, and it makes sense to add on tanks here, so that's why it devolves into marine tank. So, both of them just getting an expansion up here. You can see the base, or rather the uh, command center is inside Select's main. So, QXC getting all established here on the low ground. Select's going to be doing the same thing here pretty soon as he starts to move down there and kind of get his tanks out. Both players starting to add on the barracks now, so three barracks along with the tank production and the eventual medevac production is going to be a good amount. And these earlier stages of the game, there can be little random attacks, but we'll talk about those in other videos. It's better if you're just learning this style to kind of play safe and not take too many risks. You can see QXC's starports flying back from being across the map. Um, so here we go. The first little stages of this are going to begin, but it's not going to be too much here. Like I said, we're going to talk about this more in detail in other games. Mostly it's just the importance is getting the air control with the Vikings so you can have a spotting advantage with your tanks, considering you don't want to start burning scans at this stage. So QXC was just trying to punish Select for doing something dumb, but neither player should really be able to gain an advantage by this point, because they have the exact same units, and tanks will demand all the positions, so I think QXC just realized this and says, yeah, never mind. So a little bit of a drop in here in the main. He does pick off a tank, but he loses some marines for it, so... Kind of incidental stuff still going on. Once we start getting into the bigger marine tank ba ba uh, battles, and considering this is going to be mostly about late game, I'm going to slow this down, so... Uh, third base being taken here for QXC. Select not really as fast on the third base taking. And this is kind of the idea here, if you're just learning how to play this, is how to play defensively and kind of get an advantage uh, with your unit count. So, uh, Select is going to be seeking out for a good place to put his tanks. And if you're Select, how are you going to get these tanks in a good position to try and start ending this game? QXC has really good coverage out here. I mean, if he really wanted to, he could try to come from the side maybe, maybe start hitting this base with some tank positioning over here. He's going to opt, though to set up over here and try to start hitting this base by dropping with his dropship and moving maybe one tank at a time in his dropship to start crawling toward this base the best he can. So if you're QXC, this tank is in a good position right now. This tank should probably be about right here to defend those drops from coming down. And as long as you do that and uh, Select can't really get a great position, then you'll be just fine. So Select seeking out for that really good position can see him kind of uh, thinking about it, but he's not going to fully commit to it, he's just going to walk away for right now. He's trying to figure out what the best way to approach this is from, but really he should just be taking a third base and playing out a more normal game. And you can see QXC realized that, that position was probably vulnerable, so he moved his tanks over there for the time being. And he keeps moving these tanks back and forth because he realizes that Select is trying to find a good place to put this. And the ar if the army is out on the map like this, you still have dropships and you still have marines, so you can still do little drops like this to try and punish him for being out on the map. But of course, if they're banking up their reinforcements, they should be able to push this away pretty easily, so 
um, wherever these are being rallied to, you really want to send them out in big groups rather than one at a time. So Select has officially started to choose this as his pushing point. And he's going to start moving over here a little bit to uh, see if he can finagle his way in there. And the faster you react with the Marine tank to stopping stuff like this, the better off you're going to be. So Select is sieging up his tanks already, but QXC is going to get a big spread here. He's going to move all of his tanks forward, and if he can crush this push, then that'll put him in a good spot because he has a third mining and Select doesn't. So he really just needs to find a good defensive position here and not lose too many marines to these tanks until he's ready to push with his whole army so right now he's pushing in with some stuff on the side this stuff on the side is really just going to be to focus down tanks and these tanks once they get established maybe he'll trade a little bit with his own that'll at least kind of prevent this from continuing for much longer so coming in from the side here trying to get some tanks not really getting too much and as long as he gets the positioning here, he did thin out the marine count a lot. A couple of tanks do fall as he does flank from the side with these other marines. And now he's able to clean this up just fine. Notice that he has a pretty big economic, or rather supply advantage right now. But, but trying to move in there and break him from this point can still be pretty hard because the tanks are so good once they're in the right position. So QXC is still just trying to prevent this third from landing and we're going to fast forward again. QXC eventually will need to start thinking about going in there and trying to end the game in his own favor. And if you look at these unit compositions, I mean, it's three tanks versus, you know, five or six here on QXC's side. There's not a huge advantage right now, and especially because he doesn't have a positional advantage. And both of them are trying to seek out to see where the other person's army is. So you'll note that they're just constant scans being thrown down all the time. And again, if the tanks start to siege, run your marines away so you don't take any siege tank fire the best you can. Hopefully the opponent will chase you into your own siege tank fire. So this is really textbook marine tank engagements right here is your marines should be leading the charge while your tanks are sieging up. Really, whoever gets sieged first and gets off the first big shots is going to win these fights most of the time. So you'll see that it's a huge supply lead right now for QXC, but because Select's tanks are already sieged and these marines are already kind of hurt, uh, Select should be able to win this fight. So you'll notice he instantly pulls back his marines out of the tank fire, and uh, yeah, QXC's push is basically stifled for the time being. And Select still has some reinforcements in the background and a decent position here to prevent QXC from really moving forward any further. Now he's starting to, to do the things we talked about, is dropping on top of these tanks, maybe trying to get them to kill themselves or the Marines to kill the tanks and stuff like that. You can do things like that, but the Marines will often uh, cause it, so you can't go too crazy with it, considering they'll be able to hit the dropships. So Select is, uh, or rather QXC is still trying to move in here right now. And this is going to get to a point where it's kind of a standoff, and neither player can really break each other. So QXC is starting to move forward, Select sensing that another attack from the side could be possible. Select again, stimming forward, and then as soon as he gets his uh, his Marines hit by the tanks, he just runs them away right away to, to minimize the amount of fire. Select just needs to survive here and not die, and it's really going to be all about the way he controls his tanks and positioning. You'll notice that Select, th or rather QXC, thought he could get a position over here with his tanks and dropships and whatnot. Select figured out what was going on because of a scan, and he's, he can able, he's able to just run in there and maybe trade a little bit. Once the siege comes up, he instantly runs away. He baits QXC's Marines into the tank fire a little more, and you can see how fast these Marines die against the tank. So, Select getting small and smaller advantages as time goes on. Need to fast forward here, but now all of a sudden QXC does have this positioning over here on the side, so he's just really trying to seek out a good spot to put his tanks. He's gonna start dropping on the high ground a little bit, and if you're select, you need to find a way to stop this because if you can start hitting your base with tanks, and if you don't have enough uh, tanks to zone his out, then you're gonna be in trouble. So select just barely holding on here, and QXC has a decent position, but he's also setting up another position over here on the side. So again, select needs to know about this, and he needs to react properly. So repositioning his tanks in the right spot. Now QXC is going to try and start to advance forward here on Select's army. And by the way, let's notice the, the upgrades on the Marines right now being a huge factor in these fights. Select's only at 1-1, one, one, while QXC is at 3-2. So he has 3 armor on the way and plus 2 attack for his tanks. The upgrades are really in QXC's favor, and this whole game is really in QXC's favor. And it really all stemmed from stopping the attack right here and getting a big advantage in the tank count. So this game goes on for quite a while. Um, I want to get to one more point, and that is where QXC kind of is running a contain here on Select to the point where he can start taking extra bases, which he's doing right now. And neither player can really afford to break one another because there's just too many tanks and too good a position from both players. Um, sometimes you will get in these standoff situations. And once you do, let's look at QXC's money especially. We'll watch it continue to rise as time goes on here. And this is where you need to start thinking about getting into a different unit composition. Um, if you're in this stage, 
and it's really just a tank standoff. You need to start getting into higher tech uh, types of plays, whether that's a lot of Vikings or Ravens or battle cruisers or even viable. Um, you need to find a way to spend this money and invest it wisely so that you don't put yourself in a position where one mistake still loses the game. Um, so QXC, his bank is getting huge because neither player can really do anything to each other right now and you don't want to just throw away units. Um, so back at home, this is something that QXC doesn't do and it drags the game on for a lot longer, is he does not ever transition into later game stuff. So if you're at this point, you're a maxed out but you really still can't kill them, just go back home and drop maybe three or four starports. Um, and decide what you want to do with those. Those are either going to be, again, for Vikings and Banshees to eventually pick away at his tanks and kind of bait his Marines in. You can switch into battle cruisers with good upgrades, or you can switch into um, more of a Raven style where you try to drop Seeker missiles and stuff on his army and uh, kind of punish him, or rather kill his tank count one by one so you eventually have a big tank lead. Uh, but spending your money on later game tech is going to be a really viable and really useful thing to do once you're in this type of position so that when the transition comes you're going to be ahead in the transition and you can start gaining an advantage that way. We'll probably have a separate video on breaking siege tank stalemates uh, considering this one has already gone on for about 26 minutes. So we'll talk about that later and I, this is basically the rundown of marine tank here. So I hope that you guys got some good ideas and had some enjoyment out of this video. So. I'll be back with more videos, especially in TBT in particular. We'll talk about all types of different situations like mech versus bio, bio versus mech if you're the mech or bio player, uh, depending on which side you want to watch, and of course mech versus mech and then all kinds of different things in between. So uh, check those out in the very near future. There's more Terran tutorials down in the description if you want to look at that. So um, I guess I'll see you guys next time.